Mushoku Tensei, episode 12. Rudy returns. Time to go over what the enemy skipped, important details and changes, and my quick thoughts. So go ahead and smash that like, I do want to make this a weekly series. And a quick thank you to today's awesome sponsor, Scissor 7. The first and second season dropped last year. And Netflix just released the third season of this anime for you to binge. The story focuses on Seven, who was a top seven assassin, a stone cold killer who got paid to take people out. The fun comes when he suddenly loses his memory and his badass kung fu skills. The anime follows Seven, who is searching for his lost memories. He loves to give haircuts, and actually uses scissors as his specialized weapon. This is perfect if you're looking for a good comedy. You get quite the laugh just seeing Seven failing badly while trying to train his skills. This anime actually works surprisingly well, mixing comedy and action. Like you see this on full display when Seven takes on his first ninja lady. Let's just say, I had this giant smile the entire time. So I definitely recommend giving this anime some love, it is an easy binge. Just click the link below to get all seasons exclusively on Netflix, which is perfect timing with season 3 that just dropped. It is available in 29 languages, including English and Japanese. I know you already got a Netflix account, so no extra charge to you, which makes it super easy for you to help to keep the lights on here. I'm currently binging season 3 this week. Mushoku Tensei, a one year time skip. Looks like the anime really didn't want to touch on what happened in between then. At looking at the ocean, Rudy thought back that the last time he actually saw the ocean was back in middle school. For Eris here, here's something the anime hasn't mentioned yet. Over the past years, she's actually become fluent with the demon Gantung. You could really thank Rudy and Rui Jert for teaching her as much as possible. That said, Eris unfortunately still can't write or read in that language. For other Eris stuff, Rudy had actually not taught her magic since coming to the demon continent. So forget about casting spells without chanting. Eris had very likely forgotten the chants themselves. Ah, no more magic from her. For a moment, Rudy was getting worried how muscular she would become in the future. Oh, that little Amazon. Really taking after her mentor. Right here, Rudy was really beating himself up about not joining them back when they were at their hometown. Eris sometimes went to play in the water, but even on his day off, Rudy was preoccupied with something. If our current times have really taught me anything, it's really not to wait on stuff. For example, I'm so glad I moved to Japan when I did. As for Rui Jerd, you actually got some info dropped about the red jewel on his forehead. The Nawa has actually given you a juicy chunk about him, but so far you've gotten scraps in the enemy. Rudy mentioned that the red jewel does give him this sixth sense. The radar could detect the presence of every living creature within a few hundred meters of him. It might as well just be a shari gun. Getting to a skipped scene. Before these guys went to the boat area, these guys first went to the adventurer guild. Right here, you have a great world building opportunity for the currency. Particularly how on the Millis continent, the currency was different. It was broken up into six types. And then they actually give you a breakdown on how this compares to the demon continent. I'll just quickly display this on screen. The reason this is important is because you get to compare really the vast difference here. A B rank mission on the demon continent would actually give you anywhere from 5 to 10 scrap iron coins. That converted to anywhere from 150 to 200 stone coins. On the Millis continent, a B rank mission would be worth about 5 large copper coins. Which would more or less be 1500 stone coins. 10 times as much. So you're really seeing the stark difference here. For more juicy world building about the missions, Rudy's party actually focused on B-rank missions. They were currently A-rank. The main reason for this was not only that A and S-rank missions were more dangerous, most of them took more than a week to complete. On the flip side, B-rank missions could be completed within a day usually, which meant this daily income. This was also why they continued to stay A-rank. They could go into S-rank, but if they did, they wouldn't be able to accept B-rank missions. Supposedly, there were special benefits if you rose to S rank, but more than likely that only benefited dungeon diving parties that went into labyrinths, which their party had no plans to do. Not only were those dangerous, they took days to complete. By the way, fun fact about this, they haven't mentioned it in the anime, but I love the description and world building for the labyrinths here. The fun part about this is that since Eris has gotten proficient in the god tongue, as expected, she's frequently gotten into fights. Rudy thought that perhaps it wasn't such a good idea that she now understood what other people were saying. Alright, so getting into the Dead End Party, their group had actually been getting quite famous. Skipped in the anime was some fun stuff about this. He would always proclaim, I am Rui Jert of the Dead End. Meanwhile, whenever they did something bad, he would loudly proclaim his name and take credit for it. Which is why Rudy's the one with a really bad reputation right now. So have fun with that negative image. The enemy cut out people talking crap. You heard people saying that he must be small down there too. To which Rudy thought, I'm still growing buddy. One day it's gonna grow into something magnificent. It's gonna be like a dragon. 
further cut out was Eris actually glancing and blushing at this comment. How adorable. Rudy being Rudy, he just thought about how he could show it to her while they were showering tonight. Why not take a shower together? Anyway, getting into the cost of traveling. 200 green ore coins for the soup herd. And by the way, I did check the Funimation subtitles, and they did wrongly have 2,000 coins listed. Let me know if your subtitles were the same. Hopefully they fix this obvious mistake. You might already have an idea as to why it's so high. Just in case someone brings one as a slave, then sets it loose on the continent. Which meant they were pretty much treating this guy as if he were a nuclear bomb. And just to clarify, just in case you were wondering, why didn't they lie about this like I thought they should have? When you do board the ship, they do check what subrace you are. So if they did try to pass this guy from the Midgur tribe, they'd be discovered anyway. Lunch time, look at that delicious fish. Rudy thought that it's the best thing he's eaten since he's arrived at the demon continent. And just for a little bit more context, so far all the stuff they had eaten, Eris loved it, but Rudy thought it was terrible. Here's some fun stuff about Eris too. In the past year, she's pretty much completely forgotten her table manners. She would just cut her food with a knife, then stab it and put it straight into her mouth. Rui Jert, on the other hand, just uses fork to cut the food and eat. Sounds like what I do. Anyway, for the money talk. So it costs 5 silver coins for the human. Other demons would have to pay 1 or 2 green ore coins. Which really hammers down how insane the fee is, 200. Even if they did prioritize taking S and A rank missions, it would take them years to save up that much money. Really quickly, just for fun, I did do the math. Let's say a B rank mission gives you 200 stone coins. One green ore coin, according to the novels, is around a thousand stone coins. This means five B rank missions will give them the equivalent of one green ore coin. They need a 200. So five times 200, that's a thousand days if they do it non-stop, or about three years. So yeah, about not leaving this guy behind. See ya, buddy. Just have fun catching up. And I know some of you are wondering, how about if they just head over to the continent solo? A B rank mission is equivalent to about 1,500 stone coins. Skipping the math a little bit, that means it would take them around 130 days just spamming B rank missions. Come on, Rudy, use that big brain. This guy could catch up later. As to how they should resolve this, the anime just had Rudy say that he didn't know. Light Novel Rudy mentioned they have three options. The first option is the straightforward path. The second option, them going to a labyrinth, then finding this magical crystal or magical item. Rudy somehow thought they might be able to get the money in a single mission. Right away, Eris wanted to go to the labyrinth, but Rui Jird shot that down right away. It was simply too risky. Then the third option that you saw by the end of the episode, they need to find a smuggler. Of course, there was another option that the anime really hammered down. How about selling his staff? At this point in time, Rudy really did not want to sell it if possible. Next up, getting into the man got scene. The anime adapted this pretty faithfully. The one thing they did left out was Rudy pretty much nailing what was going to happen on the money. Oh, you want me to go with food to the back alley? Let me guess. I'm going to find some hungry kid that got lost, and she's going to have some weird guy trying to pick her up. Technically, Rudy was on bullseye, except the anime changed this up a bit. Anyway, food time. Anything roasted and skewered. Rudy really just bought whatever was easiest to carry. During this time, you saw Eris and Rui Jer training on the beach. Rudy being Rudy, he really just let his mind go. And he somehow questioned whether that was supposed to be a date. But he eventually concluded this isn't some etchy fantasy. It's nothing more than babysitting. To which Rudy further panicked. In his head, he was just trying to simulate this fight between himself and Rui Jer. But really, there was no way he could win in close range combat. But don't misunderstand, Rudy did trust him. He just thought that love is a battlefield. But anyway, for the current situation, Rudy alone with the food. It turns out kidnapping was really popular. An easy way to earn some money. But if someone was stupid enough to try that with Rudy, his plan was to crush their arms and legs and torture their address out of them. Then he would take everything from their home before turning them in. What a little devil. You saw that older lady that looked like Roxy. This scene was completely new for the anime, which was actually a good way for Rudy to think about Roxy. Then for that random couple you heard doing it like bunnies up above. That is actually the elf that Roxy's traveling with. Based on the preview pictures, I think this is going to be covered next episode. Alright, so getting into the first notable anime change. In the anime, you saw this little girl just bumming it out. In the light novel, originally there was this older, drunker fella pulling her away. To which you really just had Rudy going in for the rescue. Now, getting into the little girl. Rudy originally thought that she was a succubus. But then thinking about it more, he thought it couldn't be a succubus. There weren't any among the demon races. Besides, succubus inhabited a different continent. I like how Paul came up here. Previously, Paul had told them their race has no chance against succubus. That they were their natural enemy. <laughs> you could imagine that guy losing the battle. Anyway, getting into this great emperor, Kishirika. 
in the light on what she'd mentioned, it had been 300 years since she was revived. As for something important, the enemy skipped. You saw her using the demon eye, looking at Rudy. She wondered whether Rudy was a twin originally, and then the other one died when he was born. What she was really getting at was at Rudy's massive monopole, that it was larger than Laplace. I'm actually surprised the enemy left this out. You might have already gotten in the feel that there's something special about Rudy, and this was really one of the first few spots where it really confirmed it. For another thing the enemy cut out, when she stuck out her thighs, Rudy licked her without thinking. Come on, boy, down. This guy was already trying to lick her. I'm actually glad they left this out. I don't think it was needed. As for more info about this great emperor, Rudy thought he did hear her name before, that it belonged to the immortal demon emperor who led the demons during the great human demon war, only to get this crushing defeat. Do let me know down below if you want to know more about her. And by the way, do smash that like if you're enjoying this. It'll really help this video to get recommended more to Mushoku fans. Timeline-wise, she did appear back in Season 1, and the Light Novel did give you a little bit more info about her. Rudy then thought about one of the most popular figures here, the demon god Laplands. Even though this dude lost the war, in the past he had actually had subjugated all the tribes in the continent and gave the people a fixed place to call home, thereby bringing them peace. Laplands was regarded as one of the greatest demons in history. He thought that this girl must have been mimicking one of the great emperors during that time. Next up, getting into Rudy's wishes. For the second wish, you heard him wish for half the world. In the lineup, we actually give a reason why. Because Rudy did not need the men. Wow, I actually wish they left this in. On the flip side, for some juicy world building here, turns out Kishirika lost every battle with the people she led. As for the third request, how about your body? One of the things the enemy skipped was that this would be the, her first time since she revived. But let's get into it, Rudy getting a demon eye. Alright, so this should actually look familiar for some of you. Rudy noticed it too. Didn't Ghislaine also have a demon eye? It was really quick, but back in Season 1, you did see her use it very briefly. As to what power it has, we're gonna get into that. Can you spot the reference? Rudy thought, demon eyes. Do you mean eyes that can see a person's lifeline? That if you cut that, it'll kill the person. You can leave your guess below, but I thought immediately that this was a Death Note reference. It's not exactly one-to-one, -one, so it might be something else. Rudy then thought about a demon eye that would turn a person into stone. I think this one's much more obvious. Anyway, about the demon eye details that the enemy skipped over. Kishirika went over all of them. The eyes of magical power. The eyes of identification. The eyes of x-ray vision. The eyes of distant sight. The eyes of foresight. And the eyes of absorption. But wait, there's more. She was actually kind enough to go into them in detail. First off, the eyes of magical power. With these, you can see mana directly. This is supposed to be the most common one. That 1 in 10,000 people have one of these. I'm going to take a wild guess that this is the one that Ghislaine has. The eyes of identification. You could go ahead and use these to identify an object and their detail. I'm just getting a slime thin pseudo vibe here. The limitation, unfortunately, is that it only give you info that she knows. Anything else will come up as unknown. The eyes of x-ray vision. Like you would expect, you can see straight through objects like a wall. The limitation here is that you can't see through creatures or places with a high mana concentration. I'm thinking like a labyrinth. You could have fun looking at girls non-stop. The eyes of distant sight. Just like the name implies, you can see a great distance away. It is, however, difficult to focus on things. And while you can see things from afar, you can't actually influence what's going on over there. The little girl actually didn't recommend these. The eyes of foresight. This lets you see things a moment in advance. It's difficult to focus, but she actually recommended this. The eyes of absorption. These eyes can consume mana, which really includes mana the user uses, which is why she didn't recommend them. Anyway, for the greedy little Rudy, he actually wanted to take two of the demon eyes. Kishirika did not recommend this, not that she would mind giving him two. She mentioned that you don't want to use them constantly, which is why usually people cover their demon eye with this eye patch, like Elaine. She went on to mention that someone that lives perhaps a few hundred years might be able to control two demon eyes. But for a child like Rudy, he would actually lose his mind trying. Anyway, really quickly, going over why Rudy chose the eye he did. The eye of identification. He really didn't think it would be that convenient. Especially if you limited it to stuff that only she knows. It could really quickly become useless. For the x-ray vision, Rudy thought that it would take a while to properly control it. And he also didn't want to see Rui Jer naked all the time. In case you're wondering why he didn't just use it on girls, Rudy clarified that it was imagining undressing them is a part that he enjoyed. For the eye of distant sight, he already had Rui Jer. For the eye of absorption, it would practically be nerfing him as a magician. Rudy did, however, note down that it's nice to know that this existed, going back to potentially fighting someone with this one day. Then going for the sweet spot, the eye of foresight. 
Rudy thought about how the people and creatures of the world were quick. Being able to see into the future for a few seconds could be this huge advantage, especially for this magician. Although Rudy did realize there might be people he couldn't beat with his power. For example, things existed like the Long Sword of Light. Congratulations, Rudy, you got your first Giyos. Finally getting this potentially overpowered ability. Now this is starting to seem like an isekai that you can see in the anime. The iris of the eye is a different color than his normal color. But she did clarify people wouldn't be able to tell from afar. Maybe Rudy just lucked out it matches this green eye. Because I don't see this guy wearing this eye patch. Although let's not forget he briefly did in the anime. As for the little girl taking off, the anime actually skipped out a specific name of a person she's going to go find. Badi Gadi. After getting the eye, Rudy thought back that he'd done exactly what the man god instructed him to do so. That thought alone almost made him want to tear the eye out and crush it. For a quick anime change, you had Rudy meeting up with this nice gentleman. Originally he got to the point of actually taking out the sword and aiming it at Rudy. For a plotline completely removed, before parting, he actually asked Rudy whether he had seen a drunk dude, which should have been referring to the guy he knocked out previously that was trying to take the little girl, thereby linking the two together. Ruijer went on to explain more about the little girl. The great emperor of the demon lore, Kishirika, was also known as the demon emperor of resurrection. Another name of hers was the demon emperor of demon eyes. Supposedly she wasn't that skilled in combat, but with those 12 demon eyes, there really wasn't many things she could not see. She needs one of those demon eyes to find food. He went on to mention that her most fearsome power was her ability to turn another person's eye into a demon eye, that she bestowed demon eyes to all of her followers which gave her the power to rule over all of the demon tribes. Unsurprisingly, this story got Eris super hyped. She wanted to go meet her. Although she was searching for someone, very likely she left the city by now. Getting into more detailed info about the demon eye that the enemy skipped, that there were two types of focus. One of the focus types was like controlling opacity. At first, when tuned to the max, everything would appear doubled. Rudy tried to make the opacity as low as possible. By channeling mana into the inner part of his eye, he could weaken the foresight enough to see the present. The key thing was to focus. If he lost focus for even a second, the opacity would change. The next type was duration. Rudy could actually see up to 3 or 4 seconds if he put more mana. He might be able to see up to 5 seconds in advance. But then the image split and it blurred so much that it would give him a headache. Which meant the further you see into the future, the more it taxed your brain. He now fully understood why having two demon eyes would cripple him. Perhaps that was why the influence from all these demon eyes made her seem like such an airhead. Rudy might be onto something here. For a skipped Rudy moment, when they got back home, Rudy noticed how sweaty Eris was. Which led into Rudy getting the idea of drowning himself in the scent of that sweat-soaked rag that she was holding. For some skipped Eris info, Eris was actually the type to work hard in secret. That she would frequently train with Ghislaine on her days off. Further cut was a quick Rudy dream. That he dreamt about his old shut self, nicknaming him Pathetic Loser. I'll assume this was connected to that sweat rag remark. Anyway, getting into Eris versus Rudy. Notably, Rudy wasn't going to use magic at all. Thankfully, he had this demon eye. Otherwise, he wouldn't be able to react to her in time. For something you may not have noticed, you saw Eris drop her sword. She actually did this on purpose to lower his guard. For an anime change here, after dropping the sword, she was actually going in for her signature punch. The anime changed this so she did that sand attack. For another anime change, originally Eris went straight for the punch when she got up. She didn't offer that handshake. Originally, Rudy caught the punch with his hand and not put her in that headlock. So, did the enemy just make Eris look worse here? I do actually agree with the change, since Eris is so strong at this point, it would have been a little difficult to buy Rudy completely stopping her punch. Of course, the enemy didn't mention the one-year time skip events, but Rudy at this point potentially estimated her being stronger than Paul. Next up, Rudy vs. Ruijer. This got completely skipped. So a few things about this. Ruijer did not use his staff. He actually allowed Rudy to use magic if he wanted. But no, Rudy wanted to go barehanded. Big mistake. During the fight, Rudy actually saw two visions. In other words, two potential futures. At the end of the day, even if Rudy could see what would happen next, he still couldn't actually move in time to avoid anything. Ruijer actually revealed that he fought someone with the same demon eye before. That since then, he actually fought with the assumption that everyone had the same ability. Ultimately, it came down to their different level of experience. This is what made Rudy realize that the weakness of this demon eye had already been long established. So potentially someone super experienced could find a workaround. For another fun reference here, Rudy mentioned this hermit with a bald head and sunglasses popping into his head. He mentioned this hermit having this turtle, so I'm actually going to assume this is Master Roshi, potentially. If you have another guest, post below. Next up, getting some alone time with Eris. It turns out Eris had dedicated every single day from the week to sword practicing. That she actually managed to beat Ruijer one time. And that perhaps Eris has gotten pretty cocky about it. 
That was why Ruijer had actually used Rudy to deflate her eagle. Rudy actually thought this was not the right way of handling things. That Ares was feeling that she finally got the hang of this, only to be proven wrong. It would only leave you with this miserable feeling. That everything he had just done was pointless. For the anime cut here, aw, oh, they actually removed this Eris and Rudy moment. He had her leaning her head on his shoulder. She did voice out how she thought that he was cheating. That he just got this demon eye while she had to work her butt off. I really wish the anime left in Rudy's thoughts over this. He realized Eris was right, that he was happy getting over using this cheat. That it was dishonest. That this demon eye power wasn't something he worked hard to obtain, it just fell into his lap. While it was true that it took him a week to master, he hadn't struggled. Normally his heart would be pounding so much due to her scent or feeling her warm body. Instead he felt ashamed. It was almost like her heat and the smell of her sweat were criticizing him. Perhaps it was better not to use a demon eye unless absolutely necessary. Otherwise it may hurt his growth. Once again he was letting himself fall right into the hand of the man god. Rudy ultimately decided to only use a demon eye as his final trump card. For another skip Rudy moment, as he was going out he saw Ares on the edge of her bed, with her belly hanging out. It'd be terrible if she caught a cold, so he pulled the blanket over her. You heard Rudy mention how he wanted to sell the staff, and he would even consider selling that pendant if it was necessary. Skipped here was Richard explaining how he would never give up his beer, even if it was pushed against a wall. Not due to it being from his son, which it was, but because it was this embodiment of a warrior spirit. Relating it back to Rudy wanting to sell off his stuff. Skipping a little bit forward, the topic about smuggling got brought up. Just to get an idea of how terrible this was. Smuggling included slaves. And one of the popular crimes of this world was kidnapping. You know, since kids were easy to pick up. Which really just meant that smugglers were helping with kidnapping and selling children. Something that Rui Jert was deeply against. Ultimately the compromise here was for Rui Jert to turn a blind eye to this. Skipped in the anime was him telling him if he couldn't hold back to tell him that they should at least try to help out if a child was involved. That if it came to a point where Ruijer couldn't hold himself back, they would immediately betray the smugglers without hesitating. They could use those criminals as needed or just toss them aside. Unfortunately, the gentleman here interrupted them. Originally, both of these had this firm handshake on seeing eye to eye. As for Best Girl Roxy that you saw throughout the episode, the light novel did go into what she was doing. From the next episode preview pictures, it looks like that episode is going to be covering her. So I'll hold off for the Rocky info for now. Just know there is a lot of juicy stuff with her. So if you did enjoy this video, smash that like. This took forever. I am planning to cover Mushoku weekly. I'm going to be aiming for within 48 hours of the episode dropping. Maybe sooner. I'm just praying these videos don't get taken down like last time. I really do want to cover this, so I might just use stills or I might have to do something on camera. Who knows? Just to trick their intern. But do let me know, do you like videos this length or shorter? And do you like me including the passages or quotes on screen? Just trying to include this took like, I don't know, like three or four hours. So it's a good chunk of time. Also, what else do you want to find out about Mushoku Tensei? I might do some quick videos on the second channel for season one stuff. And here I thought SEO skipped a bunch, but the Mushoku anime has skipped a chunk of the world building and lore. I'll go ahead and post some disclaimers on screen too. You could go ahead and pause and read, but do comment below. But anyway, for a fun bonus, who is your best girl so far this anime? Definitely go watch me getting ripped off with vending machines. YouTube is suppressing that for some reason. Don't forget to subscribe, ring the bell, and I'll see you guys later.